So good morning and welcome to our online worship for the Harpers Brook group of churches on this 8th day of August. As the weather outside is changeable and erratic, so we remember our God who is unchanging and utterly dependable. So let's begin with some prayers. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Creator God, giver of all good gifts, help us to shine like lights in the world. Redeemer God, making all things new. Help us to shine like lights in the world. Holy Spirit of God, gifting life each day. Help us to shine like lights in the world that all may glimpse your glory. And we continue with some words from both the Old and New Testament combined. And if you want to respond with the words in white, please do so wherever you are. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting for the Lord, for the display of his splendour. God is good, God is love and we are caught up in that as we are to reflect that goodness and um, to those around us and to those we know and that is, that is the theme of this week and you'll hear more a little later. So let's listen or sing along with a hymn which um, witnesses to that amazing grace of our God. Just still possible for anybody.
So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbours, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labour and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Hello. Paul wrote the letter you've heard part of just now to the young Christian church in Ephesus. They had their problems, and no wonder. Ephesus was a huge centre of trade and was also a centre for the worship of most Greek and Roman gods. This was a truly multicultural society. Paul had a very successful missionary presence there for a couple of years, converting a large number of followers to the way. Probably the majority were not originally Jewish. For many generations, the Jews had held themselves separate. They were God's covenant people. They didn't mix with Gentiles socially and certainly didn't intermarry. To be honest, they considered themselves better because they knew how to please God. Paul, a devout and strict Jew, found himself being asked by God to take the good news of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles. A big ask since he had been involved in persecuting this new sect, the Christians. He took on the task and pursued it with the same zeal that he had applied to the persecution. He travelled widely, teaching the way, Jesus. He often met with opposition from the authorities. And those whose interests were affected by the growing number of people who were turning to Christ. In Acts 19, there's this interesting account of Paul's brush with a mob stirred up by Ephesian silversmiths. They were making a nice living out of silver statues of the goddess Diana, Artemis, and didn't need to have people told that gods made by human hands were worthless. Years later, now in prison, Paul writes to the Christian community in Ephesus. The first part of the letter, the part we call chapter one to three, tells the story of the gospel, how Jesus makes sense of all that has gone before and shows the way for the future. Paul was aware of the potential cultural difficulty and was keen to show that God intended there should now be one community in Christ, not differentiated into Jew and Gentile. In chapter two, he says, Jesus has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances, that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. A bit wordy, but Paul is emphasising that original covenant family of the Jewish people has been opened up by Jesus. Through him, anyone can join. One faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God. 
The reading we're looking at today comes from the second part of the letter, in which Paul shifts from telling us what has happened to suggesting how it could should change the way his this new community of Christ live their lives. Imagine, he says, that your new humans discard the old destructive ways as though they were grubby, worn clothes and put on new behaviours like clean, long lasting clothes. Instead of lies, truth. You're bound to be angry sometimes, but don't let it fester and turn into a focus for evil deeds. Turn from theft and be generous. Don't gossip and put people down. Use words of encouragement to build each other up. Don't take revenge. Forgive. Be kind to each other. It isn't just the Ephesians who might benefit from this, this advice. Indeed, it may be that it was a sort of round robin letter which was sent to other communities as well. But it's also relevant for today. The damaging behaviours listed are very much still with us, traps we all fall into from time to time. In some ways, it's easier to look at the Ten Commandments and we can say, well, I haven't murdered anyone. And I was usually quite nice to my mum and dad. But Paul's list makes me a little uncomfortable. It seems more personal. This list of instructions shows how the principles of unity and love in the church should affect the way we behave. The everyday nature of these sins does make the passage challenging. Unity and love must be real, not just in principle, but in the detail of our everyday relationships. The knowledge that we are loved by God helps us to reflect that love to others. Jesus' love is an example for us to follow and the Holy Spirit will give us the strength to do it. Those first two verses of chapter five. Here it is, as translated in the message. Watch what God does and then you do it, like children who learn proper behaviour from their parents. Mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn a life of love. Observe how Christ loved us. His love was not cautious, but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us, but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. Amen.
So a beautiful hymn that, speaking about the love of God, which Jackie was talking about, and of how we are to share it in all those different ways. And as the song said, we have the Holy Spirit in our lives to help us. We have that spiritual gift from God. But we also have the practical gift of being able to follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we now sing about that. So let us pray and please join with me in the prayers saying the words on the screen together. Breathe on me breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love as thou dost love and do what thou would do. Breathe on me breath of God, till I am wholly thine, until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. The Prayer of St Francis Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon where there is despair, hope, and where there's sadness, joy. Divine Master, grant that I may seek not so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. 
So may all those who are struggling this day know your love for them. Give them your strength and comfort. May those who need help receive it, and may we be quick to offer help when and where we can. Fill us this day with your love, that it might overflow into the lives of all those we meet, knowing that when we make mistakes, you will always give us a fresh start, and that your love never fails. Amen. Well, that song is an amazing prayer in itself so we'll finish with just a few short prayers to follow that up and if you respond in the white bold letters if you like on our families and friends this day Lord have mercy on all who proclaim your gospel Christ have mercy on all who struggle in any way, Lord have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So just before a final blessing, now actually this can be the final blessing. Um, it's picking up on the great love of God that we've been thinking about. And it's um, from the end of one of the chapters in Romans. Uh, Paul has been arguing, is God for us, against us, does God love us or not? And comes to this concise and amazing conclusion. So let this be a blessing to you for this week. Paul writes, and Alan reads, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else that is in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Nothing will be able to separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. Go well.